I just got something special in my arm, so let's hope that it turns out good. But today I want to talk about something that is kind of a hot topic among language learners, and that's should we learn languages of the same family? In other words, should we learn similar languages? Is it good or bad? And I want to talk about that today because I have an opinion. The quick answer to that question is learn whatever you want. As long as you have a passion, you should learn any language your little heart desires. However, I can recommend some things and warn against other things if you're going in this direction. So first, let's talk about some negative things that happen if you learn two similar languages. Well, the obvious thing that people can assume is that you can confuse languages because they could be similar because structures can be similar, vocab can be similar, grammar can be similar. But personally, in my opinion, I don't really confuse languages because pronunciation is pretty distinct to me. If I'm thinking of two very similar languages, uh, the difference to me would be the pronunciation of those similar words. I would never accidentally say in my French sentence, je veux sure quelque chose. That doesn't make any sense to me. I would never confuse the two, but that could conceivably happen if two languages are similar, right? As I've said in another video, I think the key to that, the key to me not doing this very often, would be to really practice your pronunciation so that chur can never possibly show up in your French sentence. That makes no sense at all. Something else negative that can happen if you learn languages that are way too similar is that you can make some bad assumptions based off the other language. So maybe you go into language Y and you already learned language X, and you see features that are similar. Oh, language X does that, 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 that. So maybe it also does this as well. And it turns out, no, they don't have that feature at all. You sound weird when you do that. The one that's coming to mind the most is how in French, they don't really use any progressive verbs. That doesn't, a progressive verb doesn't exist. So maybe in Spanish, you can say, estoy haciendo. But maybe in Spanish, there's no such thing as je suis faisant. How would you do that? I think je suis faisant. That doesn't make any sense. So maybe if you only knew English and Spanish and you went to French, you'd think, oh, I can do this, right? No. So I think that can be a downside. If you learn a similar language, you notice that A, B, and C are the same. So you think, oh, D's the same, right? No, 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 no. It's actually Delta. It's not D at all. So these are things to be careful of when you're learning a similar language. The way to fix those, I said, you know, pronunciation, work on that pronunciation so well so that it doesn't even occur to you. I would never possibly say faire in my Spanish sentence because Spanish doesn't really have sounds like that. It, it, that, that just doesn't sound Spanish to me. So I don't know how that could possibly even come into my Spanish thing. And to not make those bad assumptions, you just try to forget everything that you learned from the previous language. But when that grammar feature appears, pay attention, see how they're describing it, see how they use it, and maybe try to use it like the other language. But then when you get slapped down, stop it. Korean and Japanese are very similar languages, and I learned Korean first, and then I learned Japanese a few years later. And I remember uh, in quoted speech in my Japanese class, it was being used in a very different way. I can't remember what the sentence was or what it was like, but basically in Korean, I don't think I've ever seen multiple topic markers, but in that Japanese sentence in Japanese class, I saw multiple topic markers. So I had to ask the teacher, Nase. But what are the positives of learning similar languages? There are so many positives if you learn languages that are similar. I think something people don't mention a lot is how efficiently you can learn a language by means of another language. So of course everybody wants language textbooks in their native language, explained in their native language, but sometimes it might be more beneficial to use another language to learn a new target language. If you learn Italian, maybe it might be better to learn that using a Italian textbook written for Spanish speakers, just because the thinking framework has not been anglicized and lost in translation. 
Whereas if you use the textbook made for Spanish speakers, maybe you don't have to have too many things explained to you so explicitly. So in the end, you might actually get a better quality book because it's not focusing on the minutia so much as much as it is focusing on these big picture things that you should really be noticing. If you get a French textbook made for English speakers, it's probably going to spend a few pages explaining what is conjugation, what does that even mean? But if it was a French textbook made for it, Portuguese speakers, probably doesn't need to explain quite as much. This doesn't only apply for similar languages, but it also applies to languages that have a closer connection. So the Spanish language is a romance language and the Nahuatl language is a Euro-Aztecan languages. It's a Euro-Aztecan. Spanish and Nahuatl aren't related at all, but maybe you can find much more resources for Nahuatl using the Spanish language. Why is there a plane? Why do planes pass at 5 p.m.? Like, why do they have to be loud at 5 p.m.? I'm just gonna keep speaking, and if, I, if, and if you can hear it, that's, that's too bad. So, uh, Spanish uh, can help you learn Nahuatl, even though they're not related languages. So, don't try to always focus on your native language. You can learn other languages by means of other languages, and that might help more. Uh, a better example is probably learning Japanese by means of Korean because they don't have to spend so much time explaining certain features because they already exist in Korean so they're assuming the Korean audience doesn't need to explain what is an honorific, like, obviously. Or for something like um, doing actions for other people, there is something that's pretty specific to those two languages and that's adding the auxiliary verb give. That's I, that doesn't exist in any European languages as far as I know. I sometimes use a Korean Japanese dictionary because the word just is not making sense in the Japanese dictionary I'm looking at. But if I heard just one Korean word, I'd be able to get that instantly. What are you trying to say? Something like sugata. Uh, I couldn't understand what the dictionary was trying to tell me, but I looked it up in my Korean Japanese dictionary. I saw mosu and I thought, okay, okay, I know exactly what you're trying to say. I think another great positive of learning a similar language is that you can deepen the understanding of the languages you already do know. I have a much deeper understanding of English thanks to specifically Swedish and German, which kind of opened my eyes to some features that are completely absent in Romance languages, which people love to learn. But if you open your eyes to some Germanic languages, you kind of understand why English does some things in very uh, annoying ways. That's just a Germanic feature. Something like uh, word order, something like particular vocab. Oh, oh okay, I, that makes sense. When I learn German and Swedish. Maybe on a artificial level, uh, the words take and die have a closer etymological tie to Nordic languages, which kind of also gives you an idea about English history. Oh, these words take and die are taken from Swedish? Okay, that kind of tells you something about the interactions between Old English speakers and Old Norse speakers. Then there's some things that English resembles German more, like phrasal verbs, and learning German would kind of expand your knowledge about English. Okay, this video, I need to clarify, is not about only languages that have genetic connections because there is such a thing in linguistics as a Sprachbund, which is an area of geography where languages share similar features to each other. Despite not having a genetic relation, some features cross over to other languages through communication with other groups. Japanese and Korean, for example, have no genetic connection as far as we know, but it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that they have some very similar grammar features, similar structures, and that can be explained by maybe some kind of East Asian Sprachbund. Uh, maybe another similar Sprachbund connection would be the Balkan Sprachbund, where languages just inexplicably don't have infinitives. So in Albanian, in Bulgarian, and Greek, as far as I know, those languages say something like, I want to, I eat. So you always conjugate verbs depending on person. There's no such thing as an infinitive. But these languages are from different branches and languages from the same branches don't have that connection. So it's the geographic connection, the Sprachbund, which connects them. This also applies for the topic of this video. Okay, you can learn a language from a Sprachbund and you can notice, oh, oh, I understand that feature. I understand why we do that. 
and maybe that'll expand your knowledge uh, even more. Languages who are geographically close uh, normally have some other kind of connections, even if they're not genetically related. <laughs> I think um, vocab is a positive. Uh, it's, it has a positive and a negative. Vocab, you can carry over from another language sometimes. If you know that in French, there's a group of nouns that end in te, and in Spanish, you know there's a group of noun that end in tad. You can guess that if you see a te word in French, you can probably make it that in Spanish, and it probably exists. But you should be hyper aware of false friends. I don't really think false friends are that big of an issue. People kind of overblow false friends. But it's definitely something you should be aware of and definitely take note of when you hear. Um, in my case, I think if I notice a false friend, I think that's like a red flag in my mind whenever I hear that word. I, I know that it's very distinct and very misleading. Uh, for example, the English word gift is something you give to someone because you are happy, and in German, gift is something you give to someone you want to kill. So basically, my recommendation is to learn what you want, and you can reap more benefits if you learn a similar language. If you want to go on that polyglot journey and you want to learn a bunch of languages, there is no harm in learning a similar language. Just be careful of your pronunciation so that you can distinguish some words. Be careful of false friends, but other than that, I think it's only helpful if you know similar languages. So that's that on that. So keep learning those languages. I will see you for a new video very soon, okay? Bye-bye.